Well, hello, everybody, and we welcome you to today's presentation of Cloverfield, Cloverbelt Baseball non-conference action between the Columbus Catholic Dons and the Thunder of Osseo Fairchild. Start with the starting lineups. First for Osseo Fairchild, batting off, batting first and playing center field, number 24, Chloe Gunderson. Batting second and playing second base, number one, Haley Knudsen. Batting third and playing shortstop, number 18, Hallie Colby. Batting fourth and playing and pitching today, number 25, Addis, Addison Coxlian. Batting fifth and playing first base, number three, Brissa Johnson. Batting sixth and playing left field, number 33, Marissa Pettis. Batting seventh and playing third base, number 22, Briley Johnson. Batting eighth and playing right field, number six, Taryn Kittleson. And batting ninth and catching number 11, Elizabeth Zimmerman. So again for Osseo Fairchild, it is. So again for Osseo Fairchild, it's Gunderson, Knudsen, Colby, Coxley, and Johnson, Pettis, Johnson, Kittleson, and Zimmerman. Number nine, shortstop, Caitlin Casperson. Now for Columbus, leading off and playing shortstop, number nine, Caitlin Casperson. Batting second base, batting second and playing second base, number double zero, Sam Casperson. Batting third and playing center field, number 23, Shelby Spada. Batting fourth and pitching today, number 18, Akusa Yaboa. Batting fifth and catching, number 29, Matea Schlafke. Batting sixth and playing third base, number three, Sienna Adler. Batting seventh and playing left field, number 10, Kylie Lingford. Batting eighth and playing first base, number two, Maggie Callahan. And batting ninth and playing right field, number 14, Abby Wojcik. So again, it's Casperson, Casperson, Spada, Yaboa, Schlafke, Adler, Lingford, Callahan, and Wojcik for the Dons. Dons are coached by Troy Zimmerman, and the Thunder are coached by Justin Johnson. The Dons are 1-1 one one on the year. They played in Mauston this previous weekend. They defeated Gibraltar before running into a wall against Michigan, a 17-0 loss for the Dons against Michigan on Saturday. So the Dons will... Look to get above 500 today. Meanwhile, the Thunder coming in one and two. They have lost to Whitehall and Blair Taylor. They actually lost to Blair Taylor yesterday, 12-2, a tough loss for the Thunder. And they have a 20-4 win over Nielsville Granton. So one and two versus one and one. One team trying to get back to 500. One team trying to get over 500. We'll see who will be victorious throughout this one. Jack Weber along with Trevor Zaleski. Glad you're with us here on Zaleski Sports on a Nice Tuesday afternoon, a little wind. We'll see how that plays a factor in this game. Um, a nice spring day. Finally, the weather's starting to turn a corner. Last week, the weather was not really our friend, especially when it came to broadcasting. We finally got some in on Friday, but we had quite a few cancellations last week. And it looks like this week we'll be getting back to a normal broadcast schedule. Fingers crossed. So Gunderson, Knudsen, and Colby do up for Osseo here in the first. Again, we already went over the starting lineup. We'll talk about the Columbus defense. You got Lingford and left, Spada in center, and Wojcik in right. In the infield, you got Adler, Caitlin Casperson at short, Sam Casperson at second. You got Callahan at first with Schlafke behind the plate, and Yaboa on the mound. Again, the Dons in the Clover Belt East and the Thunder in the Clover Belt West. So a bit of a crossover here today. And Coach Zimmerman entering his sixth season as Head coach of Columbus Catholic, the fifth full season. Of course, the 2020 season was canceled to COVID-19. I'm sure nobody knew that. And the Dons will be back in action on Thursday. They will be home versus McDonald Central. They'll be right here. And then on Friday, they will be on the road at Nielsville. So that is the schedule for the rest of the week for Columbus Catholic. As Gunderson ready to step in, Yaboa's ready. And we're about ready to get this one underway. Yavoa ready, steps into the windup and deals. And that is low. And it is ball one to Gunderson. And 
Bo deals, and that is in there for a strike, and the count even one and one. Good pitch from you, Bo, to find the bottom half of that zone. Count even a ball and a strike. Bo ready and deals, and now squaring to bunt is Gunderson. She pulls it back. It's low. It's two and one. Left field, especially in the outfield, is playing very shallow, where you got right field is playing almost near the warning track. 2-1. Big cut and a miss. Count even 2-2. Two and two. Good pitch from Yaboa with the high heat. Two balls, two strikes. Yaboa deals. And a fly ball into right center field. That is going to be on oh, a home run. Chloe Gunderson starts this one with a bang. 1-0 Osseo. Hit that right in the right center field gap, found that short porch in right center, and sent it on out of here. And the Thunder strike first. They lead it one to nothing. First home run of the year for Gunderson. Again, keep in mind, this is a team that scored 17 runs and a loss to Whitehall. Again, that first game between Osseo and Whitehall, the final score was 24 to 17. That was the final score of that first game. So one nothing, and now Haley Knutson will step up. That was hit well. She got all of that one. Question was, was it going to stay in, and it did not. And a first pitch fouled by Haley Knutson. And Knutson playing second base today. Again, the first four members of this lineup are seniors for the Thunder. So Coach Johnson definitely relying on experience when it comes to building a successful team. Here's the 0-1, and that is a bit outside. County even 1-1 one one now. Already, here's the break even pitch, and that is low. Two balls and one strike now on Knudsen. Knudsen takes one inside. Count is now three and one. And after Yaboa gave up a home run to Gunderson, she's now falling down. She's now falling behind three and one on Knudsen. Now right center, right and center field playing very deep, and a chopper right back to Yabo over her head, fielded by Kasperson. She throws to first, and it is in time to get her. Goes 4-3 on the putout, as Sam Kasperson was able to release it quick and get Knudsen, who ran very well down the line, and get it to Maggie Callahan in time, and there is out number one. And that'll bring on Hallie Colby. Colby, the shortstop first pitch is right down the pipe. Good pitch from Yaboa. It's 0-1. Yaboa ready with the 0-1 and fires. And just a bit outside. Count even 1-1. One one. Not a bad pitch from Yaboa. It just was a bit off, and I think it might have been just a little bit high. One one. High. Two and one now. It's the two one. Fouled off. And the count is even two and two now on Colby. Two balls, two strikes. Boa ready and deals. Fouled off again and we'll do it again. Two balls, two strikes on the number three hitter for Osseo. 2-2. Two -two. And that is a called strike three. Heck of a pitch there from Yaboa, and that is her first strikeout of the day. And that is a that is the second out of the inning. As Addison Coxley and the pitcher will step up. That is outside. One ball and no strikes. One 
Oh no. High. And that last strikeout from Yaboa was a Jamie Wenzel strikeout. Called Jamie Wenzel at Serve Pro for the number one choice in cleanup and restoration. Serve Pro like it never even happened. Here's a 2-0. And that's high and outside. It's now 3-0 and on Coxland. Three zero, and that is low. That is a four pitch walk to the Thunder pitcher, and a two out base runner for Brissa Johnson, the first baseman today for Osseo Fairchild. Again, Chloe Gunderson homered to start the inning, then a ground out and a strikeout. Now a two out walk, and I believe Coach. Oh, that's right. Coach Johnson's called timeout for a courtesy runner as Addie Swanson will now pinch run for Coxland. First pitch, and that is sh grounded foul by Brissett Johnson, it's own one. Own one, runner at first, here he is the 0-1, and a fouled ball by Johnson, it's 0-2. No balls, two strikes. Boa trying to get out of the inning without further damage. And that is fouled off again. Johnson stays alive. She just got a piece of it, and it popped out of the glove of Schlafke. No balls, two strikes. Boa ready, Johnson ready, here it is. And that is inside, that gets away. Swanson will stay put, no advance, and the count is now one and two. Boa deals, one, two. And on the ground, right back to you, Boa. She fields, throws to first, and the inning is over. One man is left on, a home run by Gunderson. We have played a half an inning. Columbus Catholic coming up. It's one nothing. Osseo on Zaleski Sports. Bauer and Fine has been based in Marshfield since 1955. And if you're in business that long, you're obviously doing many things right. We always focus on selling world-class products, backing it up with world-class customer support. Working with Bauer and Fine Business Technologies has been a pleasure. We have staff on call that we can call if we ever have issues, and the printer usability has been really easy, user-friendly. Give us a call, visit our website. We'd be happy to come in and talk to you. Maybe there's a way we can help you save some money and work more efficiently. Chili Implement, located just west of Marshfield in Chile, is your Kubota dealer in central Wisconsin. Big or small, Chili Implement has all the best equipment waiting for you. From farm tractors to lawn care, Plus, work and have fun in a Kubota side-by-side. -side. Choose Chili Implement for your parts and service, too. Chili Implement, open Monday through Saturday to serve you and 24-7 online at ChiliImplement.com. Culligan Water delivers from your first call to your first sip to your first soak. Culligan, give us a tap. The only water that comes with a van. An SES apartment or home is where you want to live, work, and play all throughout central Wisconsin, the Chippewa Valley, and the Fox Valley. No matter where you live, look to SC Swiderski to make you feel right at home. Visit scswiderski.com for more. And Hiller's True Value is central Wisconsin's Milwaukee Tool Destination Center. Get the jobs you trust, get the tools you, you trust from the people you can depend on. Hiller's True Value in Marshfield. Here's another look at the uh, Osseo Fairchild defense. You got Pettis in left, Gunderson in center, Kittleson in right. Then you got Briley Johnson at third, Colby at short, Knutson at second, Brissa Johnson at first with Zimmerman behind the plate, and Coxland on the mound for the Thunder. As Casper, Caitlin Casperson will lead it off, the shortstop, followed by Sam Casperson and Shelby Spot of the first three due up for Columbus in this inning.
Nacio strikes first on the Chloe Gunderson home run. As Coxley and Reddy, Casperson ready, and the first pitch is high. One ball and no strikes on Caitlin Casperson. Coxley and deals 1 0. And that is in there for a strike. And that high part of the zone is going to be called today. We've seen a couple called for. Columbus, and that's going to be a strike call today, at least in the beginning parts of this game. The zone may adjust throughout the game. Break-even pitch, and that is right down the middle. It's one and two. Almost looked like Casperson was going to square for a second, then she pulled it back. Took one right down the pipe for a strike. It's one and two. Coxley and Rennie. And deals the one-two. And a flare foul territory that'll drop and be foul. It's a long way to go for Briley Johnson. Cal remains one to two. Coxley and ready and deals. High, two and two now. First game of the season for Columbus here at Marshfield Fairgrounds Park. 2-2. Two -two. And a shot, and that's going to sneak through a base hit. So a leadoff single for Caitlin Casperson. And a leadoff base runner for Sam Casperson. Oxley with a man on, now squaring is Casperson. She pulls it back, and taking off is Caitlin Casperson, and she'll take second standing. It's a good job by Sam to square to fool the Osseo defense. It was a low pitch. It was a good block by Zimmerman, but an uncontested stolen base for Caitlin Casperson. And now here's the 1-0, and that is a strike. And now Caitlin on her way to third, and she'll get there standing. So two identical plays. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Casperson fouls it off. That went off the mask of Zimmerman. And it's 1-2. and two. That didn't make a great sound as it went off the mask of Casperson. No, I'm sorry, Zimmerman. Count 1-2. and two. Runner at third. Nobody out. Oxley needs a strikeout right here. Here's the one-two. And that is sent foul, and that'll go out of play. And we'll do it again. One-two. And on the ground, that's going to seek through. That's fair, down the line. Caitlin Casperson is in. Sam Casperson on her way to second. Might have a play. Here's a throw. She slides the throw, gets away. And now Casperson on her way to third as it's bobbled in right by Kittleson. And Casperson rounding third, throwing to the infield. She thought about it. Now they're going to throw back to third. And now that throw gets away. And Casperson's going to get up, and she's going to score. That is crazy. Two runs are in. And that'll be a double and a two base error. But she went to second. There was gonna be it was gonna be a close play. She was in there safely. The throw got away. Then it went into the kind of the right field corner. It was bobbled by Kittleson. She got it back. The throw went in. And they had her somewhat picked off on third. They threw back to third. That throw got away. And then Casperson came in to score. And squaring that was bunted foul by Shelby Spada, the three spot hitter for Columbus. 
Either way, the Dons have the lead. On the ground to third. Coming in is Briley Johnson. Throw to first is in time. And there is out number one. A little bit of argument at first. The umpire said her heel was on the bag. It's good enough for us. So that'll bring on Akusa Yabo, the pitcher, who will come back out on the mound with a lead. And that is a line drive that is foul. It's only one on Yaboa. Not a bad idea, but just didn't quite have the angle sneak inside the line. No balls, one strike. Here it is, high. Count even, one and one. Break even pitch is popped up. Foul and it will not be made by Brissa Johnson, who was the closest person in the vicinity. So the count is now one and two on Yaboa. Coxley and ready and deals. And a little flare center field that's going to drop in for a base hit. So a two out single for Akusa Yaboa. And a one out base runner, sec third hit of the inning for Columbus. And that'll bring on Mateusz Schlafke. And Coxley and allowed a single to Casperson to open the inning. And Casperson sold second and third. First pitch, and now squaring to Bunn. Now that gets away from Zimmerman, and Yaboa on her way to second. She'll get there. She'll take a round trip around third, around second, and she'll retreat back to the bag. One ball, no strikes on Schlafke. One zero, -oh. high, and now that's over the head of Zimmerman, and Yaboa on her way to third, and she'll get there. So two errant pitches from Coxley and has allowed Yaboa to get from first to third. And another runner in prime scoring position for Columbus here in this first inning. They already have two in. They're looking for more. 2-0. And scoring to bunt and bunting it foul is Schlafke. It's very fortunate because I think if that was fair, I don't know if they would have had a chance to get Schlafke. She was booking it out of the box. Count is now two and one. That foul ball is actually a big pitch for Coxley as she gets a strike in this count. Two one. Schlafke takes a strike. Good pitch from Coxley. Count is even now two balls and two strikes. Big pitch. Coxley in here. Here's the two two. And that'll be chopped foul as it came back and hit Schlafke. Two balls, two strikes. Hoxley and ready and deals. On the ground to short, and that's going to sneak through. It goes under the glove of Colby, and a run is in. Hey, you got to rule that a single. As Yaboa's in to score, it's 3-1 to one Columbus. And Coxley really hasn't made a lot of bad pitches. I mean, really it should only be 2-1 to one right now. 
Either way, a runner at first for Sienna Adler. Third baseman, first pitch, and Adler takes a strike. Again, it's been the high pitch and the low, lower corner outside pitch that's been the main fixture of the strike zone for this umpiring crew today, even in just these early goings. Here's the 0-1, and Adler, that's in play. That's a fair ball. It's going to be a tough play and no play as that'll be an infield hit for Sienna Adler. It's not hit that hard, but it still counts just the same. Out of the way, runners at second and first. For, ooh, ouch. Kylie Lingford, who's hit by a pitch, got her right in the back of the calf. So bases loaded now for Maggie Callahan. And Columbus with a chance to bust this one open early. And a meeting on the mound between the Thunder infielders, and their pitcher, Coxley. Sports Scene in Marshfield is your official fanware store for player jerseys, hats, autograph memorabilia, and more. Sports Scene, up the stairs from World Buffet in the Marshfield Mall. And Stock Construction is a premier builder of municipal and industrial water and wastewater treatment systems in the Midwest. Stock Construction, a 100% employee-owned company. You got Schlafke at third, Adler at second, and Lingford at first. For the eight-spot hitter, Maggie Callahan. There's still only one out. Three runs are in. As it's been a tough first inning for Addison Coxley, and who came on with the lead. Again, Chloe Gunderson, homer to lead off the game. Base is loaded as Maggie Callahan ready to step in. Here's the first pitch. Callahan takes one high. One ball and no strikes. Oxley in ready and deals the 1-0. And Callahan on the ground. There's a play at first. The flip is in time. A run is in. Knudsen makes the play. It goes 4-3 on the putout. It's 4-1 as Schlafke, Schlafke scores. Adler goes to third and Lingford goes to second as Abby Wojcik will come on now. An RBI for Callahan, but there's two gone now. First pitch, and Wojcik takes a strike. That strike zone is low. 0-1 on the Don's right fielder. Here's the 0-1, and on the ground, up the middle, going to be a tough play, cutting it off, throw to first, not in time. Credit Colby for getting over there to cut that off and prevent that from getting to the outfield, but... Wojcik runs too well. That'll be an infield hit, and it's 5-1 to one as Adler scores. And back to the top of the order with Caitlin Kasperson, who singled to start this inning and later came around to score on that Kasperson Little League home run. Runners at the corners, first pitch, and Kasperson takes one. Oh, good, blocked by Zimmerman. And meanwhile, Wojcik will go to second. Zimmerman did save a sixth run from scoring right there by blocking that pitch. She's made some good blocks in this inning despite her team trailing by four runs. Coxley and Reddy. And deals the 1-0 to Kasperson. High, 2-0 now. And that is high. It's three balls and no strikes now on Caitlin Casperson. Three oh. 
And that is a strike. High strike. It's three and one. Three balls, one strike on shortstop Casperson, and she sends one just foul down the line. That's a fair ball. That's trouble, and two runs score easily. Count is now full as Coxlands battle from back from 3-0 to make it 3-2. Sam Casperson waits on deck. Two outs. Full count. Coxlean ready. Casperson ready. And here's the pitch. And that's low in the dirt. Good block by Zimmerman. And the bases will be loaded again. Zimmerman saves another run with a great block. And now Sam Casperson will step back up. She doubled earlier in this inning and then came around to score on a couple of errors by the Thunder infield and outfield. 5-1 and a chance to really bust this one open. And Casperson takes one low and inside. One ball and no strikes. Six hits in this first inning for Columbus. And that is in there for a strike. One and one. Here's the break-even pitch. Casperson takes a ball just a bit outside. It kicks away from Zimmerman. No advance from Lingford. It's two and one. Two one. In there for a strike. Count even two and two. Coxland trying to get out of this with just five runs on the board for Columbus. Two two. And Casperson pops it up. Shallow center coming in and off the glove of Gunderson. Two runs are in. And now Casperson. Back to first, and she is safe. And now three runs are in as Casper, Caitlin Casperson comes in to score. Three runs are in. Again, that, sit, that little flare drove in two. And then Sam Casperson was kind of caught off the first base bag. They threw back, and then Caitlin Casperson, with the great speed, was able to score her second run of the first inning. As that'll be an E8. So it's 8-1. Here's Shelby Spada. She grounded out to third her first time up in this inning. As meanwhile, Sam Casperson moves to second. They are just running all day on this Thunder team. That is in there for a strike, 1-1. One and one. As Casperson retreats back to second, this time Zimmerman looks her back. Casperson was looking to make a move to third. I think the Thunder have realized now that they're that this Don's team is going to run if they have the opportunity to. Count even one and one. And the break even pitch to Spada is low and in the dirt. And now Zimmerman, they got to have a play at third and sliding in safely. Good slide by Casperson. Did they call her out? Oh, they called her out. I guess she came off the bag. And the inning is over. Damage done regardless for Columbus. Eight runs. On six hits, we have played one complete. It's the Don's eight and the Thunder one. Back after these messages on Zaleski Sports. Wondering what to feed your team after work, the game, or this weekend? Chips Hamburgers in Marshfield and Wisconsin Rapids has tasty char-broiled burgers for any hungry appetite. From the classic hamburger to the famous Chips Champ and everything in between, check out our daily specials. Stop inside to enjoy your meal with comfortable seating. See our complete menu of burgers, hot ham and cheese, hot beef, chicken and fish, fries, rings, curds, and ice cream served year-round. In a hurry? Same great menu in the drive-thru. Chips Hamburgers in Marshfield and Wisconsin Rapids. Witness the difference of a Catholic education at Columbus Catholic Schools. I think everyone should just know um, what makes this place special. 
come and see. That's just what the Lord always said, and put your toe in the water. There are great schools, and it's a good fit. I'd always want them to come and to just feel the goodness and the family atmosphere. I invite everyone just to come in and see what it's about and to see if it might be right for them and their family. We invite you to schedule a tour today. Eight to one, Columbus as six, seven, eight due up for Osseo here in this second inning. Thunder led one nothing, but six hits and eight runs in the bottom of the first inning have allowed the Dons to take over this game. As that's high and outside, one ball and no strikes on Marissa Pettis, the left fielder for the Thunder today, and a uh, one and zero oh is cut on and missed. Count even one and one. Boa ready and deals. Big cut and a miss again. It's one and two. Two big cuts from Pettis, and she's come up empty. Boa ready with the one, two, and deals. Popped up. Shallow infield coming in and making the catch is Sam Casperson for out number one. Now bring on Briley Johnson. Again, Johnson, the only freshman in the starting lineup. Two other freshmen on this varsity softball team for Osseo Fairchild was Addie Swanson, who was a pinch runner, and Sarah Giacomino. And a little flare, that'll fly foul just out of the reach of the first baseman, Callahan. She almost had that. That was a tough play because it didn't really have a lot of um, height off the bat from Johnson. Just remains an 0-1 count rather than two outs. Here's the 0-1 from Yeboah, and that is a low strike called. Very low zone. I don't, I don't blame Johnson for laying off that one. No balls, two strikes. Yeboah ready and deals. And a flare into center field coming on and making the catch is Shelby Spada. And there is out number two. Good piece of contact by Johnson just right at the somewhat shallow spotta, and now she will move back as the eight-spot hitter Taryn Kittleson will come up, the right fielder. And Kittleson, one of five seniors in this starting nine for Osseo Fairchilds. That's in there for a strike from Yeboah at zone one. So Coach Justin Johnson is going to need to find a way to fill some spots next year as his team will lose five key members of their team. They also have Tamika, Eisen, Tamika Eisburner, so six seniors. That's tough on a softball team of 12, peop of 12 people. The 0-2, high and inside. One ball and two strikes. Yeboah trying to make this a clean inning. Again, Yeboah has a strikeout, and she's given up a walk and a home run. Except for the home run of the walk, she's pitched a good game and a swing and a miss. And that is the end of the inning. As the Thunder go in order, bottom of the second coming up. It's all Columbus right now, 8-1 Dons. You're watching Softball on Zaleski Sports. For over 50 years, the Dental Clinic of Marshfield has served the area with a talented expertise of a big city dentistry with a hometown feel. With our multi-specialty staff and board certified periodontics and orthodontics. Dental Clinic of Marshfield has solutions for your family. We take pride in being in network with an array of insurance companies to meet the needs of our communities and our patients. No matter what your dental need, the Dental Clinic of Marshfield will be there for you. Let your job journey begin at Express Employment Professionals. Find hundreds of employers looking for a candidate like you, all in one place at one time. And let Express Employment help connect you with your future career. With locations in Stevens Point, Wausau, Marshfield, and Medford, you'll find local jobs right in your community, including direct hire and evaluation hire opportunities. Express Employment specializes in light industrial, skilled trades, professional, and office careers. Begin your job journey today with Express Employment Professionals at Express 
usbuspros.com. Buy three Goodyear tires and one is free has been extended at Sherrill Tire and Auto Service. Plus, get up to $200 back on four installed Goodyear tires when you use the Goodyear credit card. Buy three and one is free in March at Sherrill Tire and Auto. Find your location at SherrillTire.com. Back after the commercial break, 8-1 Columbus leading Osseo Fairchild in this Cloverbelt crossover. Quality auto body and frame work since 1952. That explains Art's Body Shop. If you have an accident, let Mackey's 2024 Small Business of the Year give you a free estimate. Call Art's Body Shop on South Central Avenue in Marshfield. And Ag Country Farm Credit Services is a farmer-owned co-op offering a wide array of custom financing and financial services, from loans and leases to crop insurance and tax and records. They have you covered. Contact Ag Country in Stevens Point, Wausau, Marshfield, and Medford to get started. Shelby Spada is due up for Columbus here in the second inning. She was at the plate to end the second inning, uh, but San Casperson got caught off the bag at third. As we do have a new pitcher. As Briley Johnson will switch places with Addison Coxley. And so Coxley is now at third, and Briley Johnson is now on the mound. Sorry, Trevor, I just noticed that they changed pitchers. Here's the first pitch, and that is low. One ball and no strikes on Shelby Spada. So 3-4-5 due up, Spada, Yaboa, and Schlafke. And Spada grounded out to third to, in the first inning. 1-0, and that is lined in the gap in right center field. That's going to roll all the way to the wall. Spada rounding first on her way to second. That's going to sneak under the fence. That'll be a ground rule double. So, Osseo actually catches a, a break there because I think that Spada would have easily ended up at third had that not gone under the fence. She was flying out of the box. Either way, it's a leadoff double and another base runner. That is the seventh hit in this game for Columbus, and they have not even hit in two full innings yet. As now here is Akusa Yaboa. She singled and scored a run back in the first. And the Don sent 11 hitters to the plate. Well, actually 12 if you count Spada, but that was not a registered at bat. So technically 11 as Yaboa fouls it off. That's a foul ball. Spada was making a run for it. Coxley playing shallow at third. Just a little bit in front of the bag. Here's the 0-1. And Yaboa takes one high. Spada made some motion off the bag. I think that Elizabeth Zimmerman has caught on at least partially to the Columbus game plan of at least when it comes to stealing bases. She's at least been able to eliminate that a little bit more here in the second inning. One, one is fouled out of play by Yaboa, and it's one and two. She even caught on to that a little bit towards the end of the first inning as the play on Casperson, how odd it was in the inning, that does actually go down as a caught stealing. One ball and two strikes on Yaboa. And the Caspersons run very well as well as Spada. One, two. And Yaboa fouls another one off and will do it again. Hanging tough. Every out for Osseo in this game has been earned. It's been a tough business getting these Don hitters out. Here's the one, two. Yeboa sends another one foul. That's headed our way, and it will fall just short of the camera. Trevor flinched a little bit. I'm not risking anything here. <laughs> Despite being in a press box, you can never be too careful. It's too nice out to get hit by a ball. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Here's a one-two, and Yaboa fouls another one off. She's hanging tough. This is a good at-bat from Akusa Yaboa. Riley Johnson heading the count. One ball and two strikes on Yaboa. One-two, and Yaboa takes one high and outside. Again, Spada. 
drifting off the bag, and she'll retreat. Two balls, two strikes. Here it is. Yeboah rips one down the right field line. That is fair, and that gets past the right fielder, Kittleson. And now that'll roll under the fence. Back-to-back -back ground rule doubles as Yeboah trades place with Spada. It's another run in, the eighth hit of the game for Columbus, and it's 9-1. to one. Yeboah hooked that one down the line, and it was very rare that it was a very low chance that Kittleson was going to get to that one. And then it took a nice bounce for Yeboah, and it rolled all the way under the fence. So back-to-back -back doubles, 9-1. And Matea Schlafke will come up. She had a single her last at bat, and she also scored a run. The only two batters in the lineup for Columbus to not score a run. Here's a little flare into left field. That'll be caught by the left fielder Pettis, and there is out number one. That was good contact from Schlafke, but right at the left fielder Pettis. So out number one, and that'll bring on Sienna Adler, who also singled and also scored a run. As I was saying, the only two batters that have not scored runs, well, actually, there's only one now because Spada just scored. Maggie Callahan is the only one to not score a run as squaring as Adler. She takes a high strike at 0-1. Callahan does have an RBI. She grounded out to second base. The ball is one strike. 9-1 Dons. One is in. Runner at second. The 0-1 to Adler. Adler takes a strike. And it's 0-1-2. That was a good pitch from Johnson. Adler didn't like the call. That was a good spot. No balls, two strikes. One gone here in the second. Run is in for the Dons. They're looking for more. Johnson ready and deals. And on the ground right back at Johnson. Johnson Fields throws to first in time. Yeboah will go to third. Goes 1-3 on the putout. Good job by Briley Johnson to stick with that. So two outs. Runner at third. And that will bring on Kylie Lingford. She got hit with a pitch. One pitch into her at bat. Got her right in the calf. She would later come around to score. First pitch. And Lingford, a little flare. That'll be down in the infield throw to first. Not in time. Knutson laid out for it. Colby fielded it. She made the throw. And Lingford able to leg it out. As Yeboah's in, and that will bring on Maggie Callahan. First pitch. Callahan fouls it off its own one. As Knutson looked kind of shaken up, I think that she did not land the right way. I think she's okay now. She kind of got the wind knocked out of her. No balls and one strike on Maggie Callahan. Zero one. one Low and outside, count even one and one. And Callahan drove in a run with that ground out. And a little number that'll go foul. It's one and two. Langford at first. Two runs are in here in this second. It's 10 to 1 Columbus. 1 2. Callahan takes one inside. Count even 2 and 2. Had to get out of the way of that one. Johnson ready. Callahan ready and deals. Johnson able to have Callahan foul that one off. It just did sneak foul down the line. It's two and two.
Two balls, two strikes. Here it is. Callahan takes one low, and that gets away. Lingford on her way to second. She'll get there. Count is now full on Maggie Callahan. Three, two. Callahan fouls that one off and stays alive. They just call Bach. Don't know if. Not really sure what happened. Either way, Callahan's going to end up at first. A drop third strike. That's what the uh, PA announcer is saying. So we're going to go with that. And that's a ground ball shot caught by Briley Johnson. And the inning is over. Well, after all that confusion, one pitch and an out, and the inning is over. Two more for Columbus. They're well in control. 10-1. We're going to the third on Zaleski Sports. I had an employee at once ask me to prioritize family, faith, and business. And I put them in that order in particular. For each one of our employees, it's family first. You do what is best for you and your family. Then the rest of it will take care of itself. It's about making sure you make the best decisions for you and your family. At the Granite Shop, we take great pride in what we do. We offer high quality natural stone granite as well as a huge selection of man-made stone. With full slabs as well as a variety of partial remnants, you'll have no problem finding the stone that was meant for you. Our high-end, high quality granite, quartz, and marble is perfect for any kitchen, bathroom, or remodel need. We are locally owned and operated on County Road C near Stratford. We service all of Wisconsin. Back after the commercial break, Jack Weber and Trevor Zaleski as it's 10-1 Columbus Catholic. Pick up all your pets' favorites from Blate Farm. Find everything from food and treats to toys and health products under one roof. From all the brands you trust, dogs or cats, they've got you covered. Shop your pets' everyday essentials at Fleet Farm. And spring is sprung at Blue's Hair Studio on North Central Avenue in Marshfield. The stylists at Blue's Hair Studio are ready to help you get the best look for spring. Book your appointment with Blue's Hair Studio in Marshfield. Elizabeth Zimmerman ready to lead off for Osseo. First pitch is high and outside. One ball and no strikes on Zimmerman. And the Thunder led 1-0. Their only hit, which was the home run by Chloe Gunderson, who's due up second, is Zimmerman squaring to bunt, and she bunts right through it. And the count is 1-1. One and one. Again, other games going on today. D.C. Evers sets bash for baseball. This is also a somewhat doubleheader, I guess you want to call it baseball, as Osseo Fairchild is at Columbus Catholic today, as that is in there for a strike, a low strike from Yaboa, and it's one and two. New Richmond's at Eau Claire Memorial. Shyocton, it's at Amherst. Marathon is at Marshfield for softball. Wausau East is at Wisconsin Rapids. Connell Falls is at Wapaka, as that's low and outside. Two and two. Auburndale is at Assumption, which has not started yet. So those are, those are our games today. High and outside. Three balls and two strikes. You're originally supposed to go to Wild Rose, but the weather there was not our friend. It's still kind of wet and damp there. 3-2. And that is inside. It's ball four. So third base runner of the game. The second walk of the day for Yaboa. And Zimmerman is on, and that will bring on Chloe Gunderson. One for one with the home run she hit. Back in the first inning, she snuck that over the right center field wall. That is fouled off 0-1 on Gunderson.
The 1 and squaring to bunt. That's a fair ball. Throw to first is in time to get Chloe Gunderson. That was a good bunt from Gunderson. But a good job by Schlafke to just fall on that and make a good throw to first. That was a, yeah, that was a quick uh, challenge from Coach Zimmerman, uh, an unsuccessful one. So one gone. Zimmerman heads to second, and Haley Knudsen will step up. She grounded out to second base in the first inning. Yaboa ready and deals. And a line drive that is going to be into center field, the base hit. And Zimmerman on her way to third. She'll hold up there, a good throw in. From Spada, now going to second is Haley Knudsen. Smart base running by Knudsen. She ends up at second on the throw. Runners at second and third with one out for, Haley, for Hallie Colby. Colby struck out looking back in the first. Yabo in a little bit of trouble here. She had a pretty quick and clean second inning. Not quite the story here in this third. A walk, a bunt ground out, and then a single, and the, which allowed the runner to move up to second after the throw. That one's high. One ball and no strikes on Colby. 1-0. And on the ground, a second. Casperson fields, throws. They'll trade the out for the run as Colby is retired. It goes 4-3 on the putout. Second run for Osseo scores as Zimmerman is in. It's 10-2. It is an RBI for Colby, an RBI ground out. And that will bring on Addison Coxley in. Now the third baseman. She was the pitcher her first time up at the plate. Two gone here in this third inning. First pitch to Coxley and is in there for a strike. Good pitch from Yaboa, finding that high part of the zone. Oh one. In there for a strike, 0 2. Boa trying to just limit this inning to one run. Boa ready. Cox laying ready. Here's the 0 2. And she'll take a ball low. Not a bad pitch from Yaboa. One, two, and that's fouled off by Coxley, and we'll do it again. Boa ready, deals the one, two. High on outside, it's two and two now. Two two. High three and two now. Was 0 and two. Coxley's been able to draw the count full. Yaboa ready and deals the full count. And a swing and a miss. She got her. And that is a Jamie Wenzel strikeout the third of the day for Yaboa. Serve pro like it never even happened. We have played. Two and a half, it's 10-2, Columbus, back after these messages. 2023 was a year of change, innovation, building something new, and teamwork. The h &S legacy is evolving, and we're carrying it forward, designing equipment that helps farmers get the job done, looking ahead to the future of farming while staying true to the values that have brought us this far and made us who we are today. H&S. Strong heritage. Strong people. Stronger future. Hiller's True Value in Marshfield, Central Wisconsin's Milwaukee Tool Destination Center. The tools you trust from the people you can depend on. Shop the store within a store and find what you're looking for. That's what I was looking for. That's what I was looking for. Now that's what I was looking for. 
Looks like you found what you're looking for. We redesigned our store to offer the biggest selection of Milwaukee tools. A selection so big you'll need a map to find your way out. Hiller's True Value in Marshfield, Central Wisconsin's Milwaukee Tool Destination Center. Riley Johnson on for another inning, 10-2 Columbus leading Osseo Fairchild here on Zaleski Sports. As one, two, three, do up for Columbus, Casperson, Casperson, and Spada. Gasperson has singled, walked, and scored two runs. Pick up by, nope, sorry. Thanks to our game day sponsors, Hawkins Ash, Draxler Transport, Woodfield Inn and Suites, and Rem's Funeral Home. A Mutual of Wausau Insurance has been protecting homes, farms, and businesses since 1875. Visit mutualofwausau.com to find an agent near you. As that's in there for a strike. Own one on Caitlin Casperson. A one. Casperson, little flare down the left field line, and that's going to get past left fielder Pettis. Casperson on her way to second, and she'll get there standing. That'll be a double for Caitlin Casperson. Her second hit. Tenth hit of the day in two complete innings for Columbus Catholic as Johnson's going to throw one in and get a new ball from the umpire. As Sam Casperson has doubled, scored a run, and reached on an error. It's first pitch. Squaring to Bunn is Casperson. She pulls it back. Now Caitlin on her way to third. And she'll get there. Caspersons have been running all day. They are showcasing their speed. Again, Sam did get caught stealing, but it was because her foot came off the bag in an awkward slide. So that was a bad break. Here's the 1-0. Casperson takes one low. Good block by Zimmerman. It's 2-0. Again, the Don scored eight in the first, two in the second. Meanwhile, Osseo Fairchild... Had a home run in the first. They got a run last inning on a ground out. After that home run by Gunderson to lead off the game, it's been all Columbus. As that's popped up, playable, coming in and making the catch is the first baseman, Brissa Johnson. And a big bat retired for this Osseo pitching staff as Sam Casperson is retired, and that will bring up Shelby Spada. Spada is one for two. Ground out to third and a double. She scored a run last inning. First pitch. Spada on the ground to third. Coxlean's got it, throws across the diamond, and that throw gets away. As on her way to second goes Spada. Now she's not stopping. On her way to third. Throw is going to be cut off. Spada will get there. As... Caitlin Casperson comes in to score. That'll be an E fly on the throw by. It's 11 to 2. Here's Yaboa. And she takes a high strike. 0 and 1. The one to Yaboa. The Yaboa pops one up and foul out of play. That'll head towards the playground. No balls, two strikes here at Marshfield Fairgrounds Park. Lee Field. No balls, two strikes. Here's the 0-2 to Yaboa, and she sends another one foul, and she's hanging tough. Again, Yaboa has two hits, a single and a double. 
Actually, last inning, Spada and her had back-to-back -back ground rule doubles to start the inning. As Matea Schlafke stands on deck. Go to Yeboa sends one in the air to right field, drifting over his Kittles, and that's out of it's a foul balls that drops in foul territory. It remains 0-2 as Yeboah continues to hang tough. Still no balls and two strikes on Yeboah. She's hanging tough. Riley Johnson, these are hit bats that got to wear you down as a pitcher. The 0-2, and Yeboah bangs one into center field. Way back, get up, goodbye! Two-run home run, Akusa Yeboah. Thirteen to two, Columbus. Two run dinger to straight center by the pitcher Akusa Yaboa, and it's thirteen to two, an eleven run lead for the Dons. As Yaboa's got to get her bat, that'll bring on Mateusz Schlafki. First pitch to Slavke. She takes one low. One ball and no strikes. Fly ball into left center. That is going to be caught by Pettis. Heck of a catch by Marissa Pettis. That was hit well by Slavke. Second time she's been robbed of a hit by the left fielder for the Thunder. And that will bring on Sienna Adler. Adler singled and scored a run and grounded out to the pitcher. And Adler in the air to left field. Pettis going back, and she makes the catch. Barely has to make a move, and the inning is over. Damage done. Three more in, including the two-run home run by Akusa Yaboa. It's 13-2. All Columbus will be back after these messages. You're watching softball on Zaleski Sports. Hello, I'm Jenny Shaner, Realtor, Next Home Hub City. If you're a first-time home buyer or seller, or you've been around the block, because of my experience, I'm able to help you in the most efficient way. I'm a full-time, full-service realtor. I focus on my clients 100%. Let's work together as a team for a win in your next real estate transaction. Need a new mattress? All Furniture in downtown Marshfield has mattresses, and you can save like never before. We have stacks of mattresses, save big on factory liquidations and closeouts, one-of-a-kind items and mismatched fabrics. Save on special purchases and roll back pricing on two-sided flippable mattresses. Discounts on adjustable bases and even clearance pricing on floor models. The Furniture People for good home furnishings. Mall Furniture, where value is yours. Oh, Columbus 13-2 as Akusa Yaboa back out for another inning after her two-run homer. Akusa definitely making a strong campaign to be our Zaleski Sports Highlight House player of the game at the end of this one. The Gray Dog Axe Throwing Company is now open in Marshfield. It's fun for all ages, eight and older, so bring the whole family. Join a league or plan a party. Book your awesome experience today. Visit thegraydogaxe.com or find them on Facebook for more information. I gotta tell you, when I was eight years old, I don't think my parents would have taken me axe throwing, but that's become a thing. I Until a few years ago, I had never even heard of it. 
I feel like it's something that looks easy, but it's probably not. As Brissa John, no, I'm sorry. Oh, it's no, it is Brissa Johnson. The Thunder were about to hit out of order as Marissa Pettis was about to stroll to the plate. She'll be due second as five, six, seven do up for Osseo Fairchild. Yavoa ready and fires and a big cut and a miss from Brissa Johnson. Brissa Johnson grounded out to the pitcher to end the first inning in her first at bat, over one on the day. He'll one. Just a bit outside. One and one. Break even pitch. And Johnson grounds one. A fair ball fielded by Lingford for out number for Callahan, sorry. Other way, out number one. Three unassisted. As Marissa Pettis. Pettis popped out to second her first time up as she fouls one off 0 1. Here's the 01. Swing and a miss. Pettis trying to hit that high heat, and she got none of it. No balls, two strikes. Yaboa has the count in her favor. Don's lead by 11, and that is just a bit low. Not a bad pitch from Yaboa. One ball, two strikes. Boa ready and deals. Fly ball into shallow center spot. A coming on. She'll play it on a hop. And it's a single for Marissa Pettis. And the third hit of the day for Osseo Fairchild. As Briley Johnson. No. Yeah, Briley Johnson. Steps up. Runner at first. One out. And Briley fouls one off. It's 0-1. <laughs> no balls, one strike. Yaboa deals. High. Good snag by Schlafke. Count is even one and one. Break even pitch. High. Two and one. Uh, Schlafke. Looks the runner back to first. Again, you'd have to believe that Pettis, when you're down by 11 runs, you don't want to be making mistakes on the base pass. 2-1 is fouled off. Obviously, it's a steep hill to climb, but you always want to believe as a coach that you still have a chance to win this game, and making outs on the bases is not going to help with that at all. Count even 2-2. Two and two. Briley Johnson flew out to center field their first time up. And the 2-2 pops out of the glove of Schlafke as going to second base is Pettis. And the count is now full. Three two. And that's fouled off by Johnson. She stays alive for another pitch. We got a quick break as Caitlin Casperson tying her cleats. We're back. Yaboa ready. Deals a 3 2. And that is a called strike three. Fourth K of the day for Yaboa. The fourth Jamie Wenzel serve pro strikeout. Serve pro like it never even happened. The best in cleanup and restoration. So here is Taryn Kittleson, first pitch. And Kittleson takes one inside. 
Ball one. Runner at second, two outs. 11 run lead for the Dons. 1 0. Swing and a miss. Big cut and a miss from Kittleson. MLB, the Brewers back in action. Game two of their four games, seven of the Reds. Almost pulled it out yesterday, 1-1. One, one. Swing and a miss. Falling down 8 nothing. they managed to come back and make it 9-8, but Ellie De La Cruz just a little too much for the Brew crew. And the Reds' bullpen just good enough to hold on. 1-2. And that is a line drive foul off the cage, and we'll do it again. Congratulations to the UConn Huskies for their second straight national championship, a 75-60 win over the Purdue Boilermakers, 1-2. Fouled off and out of play, and we'll do the 1-2 again. First repeat national champions since Florida in 2006 and 2007. 1-2. Fouled off. We'll do it again. One, two again. High. Now going to third. I'd have a play. Throw. Not in time. As Pettis ends up at third. Smart base running. The count is now even, two and two. Credit Johnson, I mean, Kittleson for extending this plate appearance, but she goes down swinging, and that is the end of the inning. Two Ks for Yaboa, a runner left on for Osiel Fairchild, no runs. 11-run game, we're going to the bottom of the fourth on Zaleski Sports. After a couple years of a job that doesn't fit, it's time for more money, more opportunity. That is where Mid-State Technical College comes in. Would cooking be a good fit? Try on a career in welding. Perhaps the outdoors suits you better. Or maybe helping people is a better fit. No matter your path, we've got cutting edge classes with field trained professionals and better tuition options, making Mid-State the perfect fit. Good day, my name is Ken Hyman and welcome to Nasonville Dairy here in central Wisconsin, Marshfield, Wisconsin, as a matter of fact. We make a lot of different cheeses. We make cheddar, Colby, Monterey, Farmer's Cheese, Peach Cheese, Cuesa Blanca, Cuesa de Fira, Seco, Parm, Romano, Asiago, Fontina, Fedicaceri, Cafletiri, Cafla Graviera, 20 different flavors of Monterey, as well as making Edom, Gouda, and Munster. And the cheese be with you. Bottom of the fourth inning, it is all Columbus Catholic here against Osseo Fairchild. As today's game is brought to you by Culligan Water. Get Culligan Water for only $9.95 a month for the first three months. Visit Sterling Culligan Water at CulliganH2O.com. And Express Employment can help you find your next career path with just a phone call. With locations in Wausau, Stevens Point, and Marshfield, no matter where you are in central Wisconsin, save yourself some time and find your next employer at Express Pros. 13-2. Don scored eight in the first, two in the third, and three two in the second, three in the third. While Osseo scored one in the first and one in the third. Uh, seven eight nine due up. Lingford, Callahan, and Wocek. Riley Johnson out for another inning. Kylie Lingford, one for one today. Hit by a pitch and a single. Looks 
looks like Coach Zimmerman may start using members off his bench. We will see as that is It's outside. One ball and no strikes on Linkford. Linkford lines one into center field. That's down for a base hit. Second hit of the day for Kylie Linkford. And that'll bring on Ashley Weiler, number 21. Um, it'll be uh, I, Ashley Weiler for Maggie Callahan. It's 21 for two. Does look like Abby Wojcik will hit next. She is in the on-deck circle. Again, in a game like this, there's... No problems with going to your bench, even if it's the other way around where you're way out of a game in the opposite end. Get some of these, get some of the other players a chance to showcase their skills and show how they could fit in the lineup, maybe not even this year, but later down the line. As Weiler ready to step in, a junior. First pitch, Weiler takes one low and inside. Nice block by Zimmerman. It's 1-0. One zero, and now Weiler scoring to bunt. That's low. Two and zero. Throw back to first, and Lingford is back. Two zero. Low and inside, and that gets away. Lingford on her way to second. She'll get there standing, and it's three and zero now on Weiler. Yeah, and we'll see if Weiler comes in to play first for Callahan or if this is just a pinch hit opportunity for her. Here's a 3-0. Weiler takes one high, and that's a four-pitch walk for Ashley, for Ashley Weiler. And runners a second and first, nobody out for Abby Wojcik. Wojcik singled and scored in the first and then lined out to the pitcher in the second. And now she's scoring to bunt, and that's a fair ball. Heck of a bunt. Throw to first is not in time. It's a bunt single for Abby Wojcik. That was a brilliant bunt by the freshman. I mean, when you look up a bunt in a dictionary, there would be a picture of that one. That was an incredible bunt. Base is loaded, nobody out. And back to the top of the order with Caitlin Casperson. Casperson has singled, walked, and doubled today. First pitch. Casperson takes one a bit high. One ball and no strikes again. That's not a bad spot for the pitch from Briley Johnson. Again, there's been some pitches in that zone that have been called strikes and some that haven't. It's kind of been like probably one of those hairline zones by missing is that's high and inside 2 and 0 now on Casperson. Base is loaded, nobody out. Each team has hit a home run in this game 2-0 as Casperson pops it up infield fly rule and that is going to be caught by the pitcher of Riley Johnson for out number 1. So for the first time today, Caitlin Casperson has been retired and now Sam Casperson coming to the plate. She is one for three, a double, reached on an air, and a pop out to the first baseman, as that's high. One ball and no strikes. One zero. Casperson takes one high. Two and zero. Two zero. Casperson pops it up. Playable and making the catch is the second. The runners get a tag. Throw to the plate. Lingford is safe. It's going to be a sack fly. 
Knudsen made the catch. Lingford had the awareness to tag up and score, and the Don steal a run. Weiler heads to third. And Wojcik is at second. Go down as a sack fly for Sam Kasperson, and now Shelby Spada will come up. wonder if one of the coaches is... arguing and there was no infield fly rule which is the correct call that was on the grass of the outfield so here's Shelby Spada Spada one for three grounded out to third had a double and reached on an error she takes one low and inside one and oh One oh. Spada rips one into center field, but right at Gunderson, and the inning is over. That's the last out of the fourth. One more in for Columbus on the sack fly. We have played four complete. It's the Dons, 14, the Thunder, two. Back after these messages. Hi, I'm Shad from Next Step Prosthetics. Five years ago, we opened our practice to provide life-changing prosthetics that are both comfortable and functional. I would definitely recommend Shy. Shy is very compassionate, caring. We've grown to serve patients throughout Wisconsin. We want to thank them, their families, and providers who have trusted us on the journey. Go to Next Step because it's going to change your life. Why wait another day? Call to set up a free, no obligation evaluation. Let us take the next step together towards a better life. know how a bank should be at Partners Bank. Banking should be easier, treating our customers as valued and important. Services should be better with online and mobile banking and locations close to where you live and work. Loans should be quicker and we make all decisions locally with years of experience helping people with their financing needs. Partners Bank, member FDIC and an equal housing lender. You're tuned in to Better Halves. Mike, what are you looking for? Skip, I'm not getting older, I'm getting better. I still got big plans for my life and my Medicare. I know exactly what you want from Medicare. Same as all the other guys, me. <laughs> hey Mike, I'm Sheila from Security and I'm just like you. In fact, I'm from your neighborhood and I've got a Medicare plan that treats you like you. Did it just get better in here? Zimmerman swings and misses for strike one. Top of the fifth inning as Yaboa trying to pitch five strong innings. He'll one. In there for a strike, it's 0-2. The 0-2. And that's a good pitch. A called strike three. Sixth K of the day for Akusa Yaboa. Back to the top of the order with Chloe Gunderson. She's homered and a bunt ground out. Inside 1-0 and on Chloe Gunderson. And Osseo led this game 1-0. Fortunately for them, after the first, it was 8-1 Columbus. And that gets away. Two and zero on Gunderson. Two zero, and that's in there for a strike. It's two and one. Good pitch from Yaboa to get back on the count. Two one, foul that a play, and we'll do it again. It's two and two. Two two. 
just a bit high. Good pitch from Yaboa. Yeah, and Columbus Catholic will be back in action right here on Thursday. They'll be home versus McDonald Central. The Max on the Clover Belt West. Here's the 3 2. And Gunderson takes ball four. Good at bat from Chloe Gunderson. And a one out base runner for the Thunder here in the fifth. Now Haley Knudsen will come up. One for two, a ground out to second and a single. Meanwhile, Osseo Fairchild is at Thorpe on Fridays. That's a bunt. That hit, that hit the that hit the batter, and they're going to call a foul. I'm about to say, saw that hit off the foot of Knudsen. I think she even said it hit her toe. <laughs> yeah, Osseo only has one game left this week. They are on the road on Friday at Thorpe, which is a C, which is a Clover Belt. I keep wanting to say CWC. I do CWC games too much. Done a little bit of Merrillwood lately too. Here's the 01. Line drive. That is going to sneak through. Casperson tries to save it. Not in time. That'll be a hit for Knutson because even if, even if they tried to throw to first, I don't think they would have got her. So two men on, or two runners on, I should say. I keep wanting to say two men. Again, I call baseball too much. Yeah, there's one out. Two on for Hallie Colby. Colby 0 for 2, struck out looking and grounded out to second. Osseo trying to get a few more on the board here. On the ground to first. Weiler's going to throw to third. And now that throw kicks away. Actually, I apologize. Callahan is still in. I said Weiler. We'll go three unassisted. Runners advance, two gone. And it'll be up to Addison Coxleyan to extend the inning. So that's high and inside. One ball and no strikes. Yaboa ready. And deals. A little flare foul, and that goes off the facing of the Osseo dugout. One and one. Osseo down to their last out. They would need three here to extend the game. Break even pitch. And Coxley, and on the ground, that'll be foul. And Osseo down to their final strike. And coming up next is the Nasonville Dairy Post Game Show. Assuming this game does not go seventh inning, seven innings, otherwise it will be after the seventh inning. Bo already one two, fouled off and Osseo stays alive. You can get your fresh cheese curds made daily anytime in Marshfield or Curtis or at NasonvilleDairy.com. We'll talk with Coach Zimmerman and a player of the game. One two, just missed, and the count is even. Two balls and two strikes. That was a good pitch from Yaboa. A good take from Coxlean in that situation. 2-2. Two -two. And that is a called strike three, and that is the end of the game. The seventh strikeout for Akusa Yaboa, and the Dons are victorious. They are 2-1, and 14-2. As that is the end of the game. Coming up next is Nasefield Dairy Post Game Show. We'll play the ad. We'll have a talk with Coach Zimmerman and the player of the game. Back after these messages. Again, final score. Columbus Catholic 14, Osseo Fairchild 2. Good day. My name is Ken Hyman, and welcome to Nasonville Dairy here in central Wisconsin, Marshfield, Wisconsin, as a matter of fact. Nasonville Dairy actually goes back to 1885. We are the oldest plant in Wood County. When our father brought us here in the early 1960s, we ran 7,500 pounds of milk a day. We now run 1.8 million pounds of milk a day. We buy dairy milk from 200 dairy farmers here in central Wisconsin, produce it, and ship it all over the world. 
We make a lot of different cheeses. We make cheddar, Colby, Monterey, Farmer's Cheese, Peach Cheese, Cuesa Blanca, Cuesa de Fira, Seco, Parm, Romano, Asiago, Fontina, Feta Caceri, Cafeteria, Cafla Graviera, 20 different flavors of Monterey, as well as making Edam, Gouda, and Munster. This has allowed us to go to a lot of different countries. Our furthest accounts are now in China, Japan, Canada, Saudi Arabia. We do ship to Mexico, as well as a number of other places throughout the world. This is what we call Cheese Making 101. We tried to walk you through the cheese plant today, and we're in hopes that you see our people, what they're doing, and the amount of work that goes into producing the products that we hope you enjoy. We make a lot of different cheeses. We make cheddar, Colby, Monterey, Farmer's Cheese, Peach Cheese, Cuesa Blanca, Cuesa de Fira, Seco, Parm, Romano, Asiago, Fontina, Feta Caceri, Cafeteria, Cafla Graviera, 20 different flavors of Monterey, as well as making Edam, Gouda, and Munster. And the cheese be with you. Talk with you, Coach, first. So obviously this weekend you guys split, um, win over Gibraltar, and then a loss against Michigan. So what do you feel like you guys just did the best after kind of a short break? You guys didn't have that long of a layoff since Saturday. What kind of 
What do you feel like you guys just did the best today in the win here today? I thought we attacked at the plate. Um, we did not swing out of our zone, and when it was a strike, we were really cutting in half. So I thought we, we had 14 hits tonight. Uh, that was awesome. Uh, like I said, we had a little bit of rust this weekend, possibly, and we played a really, really tough Michigan team, ranked state ranked team. Um, they got Division Two, II, Division One girls all in there, and it was it was tough for us to see that type of speed. But we really settled in tonight. We played our game uh, defensively. We did great. We had girls diving all over the place, and that's that's what's going to win us games. Yeah, obviously this um, Thursday you guys have another tough test, uh, McDonald Central State team last year. So uh, they're obviously going to be a, a tough test. So what do you feel like you guys need to continue to do to be successful against the Max on Friday? We stressed, or Thursday, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. We yeah. stressed the little things, you know, and we, we stressed it again tonight, the diving for ball to knock it down, just to keep a girl from scoring. Those are the little things. And if we do that, we're going to be we're going to be okay. All right. Thanks, Coach. Yes, thank you. Yep. All right, player of the game, Akusia Boa, three for three, as well as five great innings with seven strikeouts. So, um, obviously, uh, young season, still a lot to go, but um, what's just kind of been the best thing so far with your teammates? What do you guys feel like you guys have just done the best so far, I guess? I feel like we're just all really supportive of each other. We are always celebrating the little things, the little bunts, the little hits. I mean, even our freshmen are stepping up. Like, Abby had a great bunt. So I feel like that's what we're doing. We're just stepping up and attacking at the right moments. And, yeah. Um, obviously, it's this may be a simple question, but the home run, dead center, kind of what was the approach in that at bat? That was a good at bat. You fouled off a couple of pitches before you got the one. Would you like, what was kind of just the approach in that bat to eventually get the good result? Yeah, I was swinging at some pitches out of my zone, but then I heard someone say uh, that they want to step in a few feet, and so I just heard that, and I was like, hey, make them regret it. So, yeah. All right, well, you guys have a couple games for the rest of the week, and we wish you luck. All you just need to do is just say your name, look at the camera kind of up in the corner, and just say your name and that I'm in the house. I'm Akusia Yaboa, and I'm in the house. Great game. It's going to ride a finish, 14-2 Columbus Catholic over Osseo Fairchild. Have a great night, everybody.